He's one of England's most capped international players. Seaman is the man here. He's one of the world's most decorated goalkeepers. And it was somehow kept out by Seaman. That is a fantastic save. This is Seaman Says with David Seaman. And Seaman, what a magnificent save. Hear him. Breathtaking. Like never before. Hello and welcome back to Seaman Says. The standout match for this weekend takes place at 5 30 and it's Man City against Spurs. And yeah, this is a good game. Spurs are still going under that radar. They're not making headlines, they're just carrying on, picking up results, getting good wins. And now they're going to be tested, obviously. Um, and do you know what? It, it wouldn't surprise me if Spurs go up there and win because they're, they're they're capable of that and they've had good results up there, haven't they, in the last few seasons? They have. I was I was trying to take into consideration a lot of things that happened in the weekend that have just gone. So Kulisevsky was rested, but a lot of these changes and Richarlison having such a good match, um, a lot of these changes from Conte had Champions League in mind because they're in Champions League action on Wednesday. So mm. the rotation for both City and Spurs this week is going to be really difficult to predict. I, I think in terms of teams, I don't know where we're going to be at come Saturday at 5.30. Man City are going to want to react to the fact that they drop points with Villa. Um, so I think yeah. from a Spurs point of view, you'd be wary of City when they're like that. When they, Whenever they've dropped points, that next game is, is always a horrible one for the opposition. Do we think <laughs> that Haaland could be saved for this one a little bit. Now, we haven't seen Pep rotation in full flow yet, but off the back of a Champions League week, my gut reaction is that Haaland will still play some time, but he won't play all of the match. And I don't don't know whether he starts or whether he comes on for the last 30. But I, I think we're going to see certainly Bernardo Silva getting more time. I would imagine Mares in this game, mm. it's fine for City because that, that bench is good enough to, to get into Europe on its own, isn't it? But for Spurs, trying to yeah. trying to work that out and counterbalance it, I think this is a real battle of the two managers, actually, in terms of all the prep for this game. Who are they prepping for? Can they work each other's moves out a bit like chess before the other one plays it? It's, it's, a, it's a massive game for, for both clubs. So I would have thought that even coming off the back of Champions League games, that, that both clubs will want to be at full strength. I can't see them resting players after after a Champions League game for that. So Spurs won both both of these matches last year. So Spurs did the double of them last year, last yeah. season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's why you know they've they've got that little knack. But Pet will obviously uh he'll he'll remember that and will want to put that right. But um yeah it, it's it's going to be a great game. There's no doubt about that. It's um, it's top quality players. Spurs are going under the radar, and now they're going to be outed. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> two top strikers. Is is that is that how it's going to be billed? Kane against Haaland? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and two two different strikers as well. Lindsay, it's great to watch. You know, and it's great for for kids as well. You know, I often talk about. You know, like the goalkeepers, like me and Schmeichel, were totally different ways of doing goalkeeping. You know, with Kane, you know, he he drops off a lot more. Whereas with Haaland, all you, he's in the box, he's in and around the box, and you know, so there's two different ways of being a striker. And when kids are looking at that, you know, they need to take bits from each. You know, because they are both top quality strikers. So I made a bold claim about combination play um, and strike partners, I suppose, is probably how we would we would list it. We know that Son and Kane have assisted each other a record amount of times. And I said from the beginning of the season that give them a few seasons together and I think Kevin De Bruyne and Haaland overtake Kane and Son because I can see them linking up that many times. Um, and I, so I think that's also a really lovely subplot in this match because Son hasn't been at his usual best to start this season. KDB has been rested a little bit in patches. So is this the mm. game where they both full throttle come together? Um, and and do we see those link-ups? Because it's going to be hard for both defences to stop those when they're, when they're in their full pomp. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, and it, and it is. It's a great point that when you look at the two pairings, you know, obviously the Kane and Son have, have been together a lot longer. But you look at the De Bruyne and Haaland, and you think to you, who who would you choose? Which pairing would you take? Like De Bruyne right and ha- Haaland, De Bruyne and Haaland for me. Yeah, and it isn't as proven. And the fact yeah. that I'm saying that, and it's not even as proven, is is crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it just, I know it is. You know, and when you look at the quality of of, of Son and Kane and and the goals that they've got together. You just can't yeah. help thinking that De Bruyne and Haaland are just going to like blast them. And I'm still thinking De Bruyne and Haaland. <laughs> <I know>, exactly. <laughs> but that's yeah. how good they look, you know, and, and we all know De Bruyne is an, an amazing player, but we everybody's like, yeah, but Haaland's going to be even better. <laughs> I was just, I was just going to say, do, do you reckon there's a there's a possibility that in the next few years, Harry Kane becomes the Premier League record goal scorer, holds it for a few years, and then he's overtaken by Haaland? Um, I don't know, actually, well, Callum. I'm, we say there's six six games into uh, into his I know, Premier League career. I'm very premature. <laughs> 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 I don't. I don't think he plays in the Premier League for as long. That's exactly what I was just about to say, Lindsay. Yeah, you know, that's if he stays here. He's 22. Oh, you know, if he stays yeah. at City for anything like six to eight years, it looks like he's easily going to smash it, but. You know, it's it's all obviously it's dependent on injury. You know, we saw what happened to the guy at Wolves. You know, and it, it's all dependent on injury and where he stays. You know, it's um, you just watch it and you just you can't believe that he's the options that he's got, the ability he's got is just. Everybody was talking, talking, weren't they? About, oh, can he do it in the Premier League? Can he do it in the Premier League? Oh, yes, he can. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just going to get better and better, you know, because it's the amount of chances it is that the guys are creating for him are just, yeah. I, I think that's it. one thing. I mean, we've 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 sort of waxed lyrical uh, on this episode and on Mondays about how good Haaland is. Yeah. But we've only kind of touched slightly on obviously on on KDB, but on the the team that are feeding him, and that's not to say that for Kane that the Spurs players are you know are slouches by any means, but City is so well oiled mm-hmm. that and you know the way that they can drop players in and out and rotate, uh, it it just it, it's an unstoppable machine, and 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 then you <clears throat> and then you spearhead that with Haaland. And that, that this is only like what are we five games in, or six games in, and you can see already that Man City are, are picking his runs, you know, because sometimes it takes a little while for for the team to get used to a, a new striker, and and it's a diff- and it's a little bit of a different way of, of playing for Man City, you know, because they used to go like down the wings or like just play little one twos in and around the box. Now they know they've got that option of a through ball, and obviously De Bruyne has got that option. And has got the execution perfect. It just shows you how quickly Man City can adapt to different styles. Do we think that Romero is going to be back for this match? Do you think he'll be playing and marking Haaland? Depends. Depends on in, on his injury. Um, I think that's huge. I think this might, it's it huge might, it, in this game. Yeah. I, bo- both ends of the pitch, it actually. It might still be because- sore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still, still got a bit of a tweet. Oh, it's still a little bit sore. Might have to miss this one. <laughs> <laughs> might need think, a bit of um, practice. <laughs> I think there's definitely goals in this because you look at Dyer in central defence and I, I still have a few issues there sometimes <clears throat> with his positional... Yeah. Uh, play and then I look at the changes that have happened for Pep in his back two. You know, Cancelo played in that back two, didn't he? At the weekend, just gone. Um, yeah. So yes, you might have you might have Walker in his pace next to you, but there are ways of get, getting at City, and teams have exposed that. Equally, yeah. there are ways of getting at Spurs. Everything that we talk about about them is about their attack and their threat and their their goal potency. But at the back, if you can catch them on a counter that they, they can be got at so i really feel like there's going to be goals in this um yeah we, we might both go for our desmonds <laughs> yeah might do, might do. <laughs> yeah you're right they will you know both, both defenders both defenses need tightening up you know 
the Man City defense really needs to tighten up, you know, because they have been shipping mm-hmm. goals, which is not, you know, not their usual. Um, Spurs have looked tighter, but um, you know, the, the strike forces are just, yeah, it's just I, I can't wait to watch it. It's um, hopefully it is a great game, you know, and, and there there is a, a lot of goals in it. But um, knowing us, we'll build it all up, and it'll be nil nil. Nobody, nobody Maybe, there well, if it is anything. nil-nil, I expect to see Pep shouting at John Stones again, you're the man, you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> David Seaman and Lindsay Hooper. This is Seaman Says. Uh, what, else, what else are we thinking about this weekend then? I know that your Arsenal are at home to Everton. There's the Mikel Arteta link there. Um, they shouldn't cause you too much trouble, though, should they? I wouldn't have thought so. Um, it would be nice because it's obviously it's Aaron going up against Jordan um, also. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that that would be interesting. But, yeah, look, you, you don't know what you're going to get with Everton at the moment. You know, you get sometimes you get a good performance. You know, even the, the result, which they get a lot of confidence out of from Liverpool, Jordan still had a lot of saves to make, you know, so that shows that they're leaking chances, um, you know, and so, and with Arsenal coming back off that United defeat, they'll be wanting to put things right. We're still top of the league, you know, and let's, let's realise that, let's realise where we are and, and still move forward. You know, as I said, the, the result wasn't a good one, but the performance was good. So take that into the Everton game, get a good three points, solid performance and uh, move on. I think now that this is this time that Arsenal will start going into the Thursday Sunday um, routine, do you reckon that might cause Arsenal some issues because squad depth has been called a, it could be a, a problem for them? Yeah, it, it could be a problem. Um, I think the only you know because it's Thursday Sunday, so you still got like Friday Saturday recovery, then you play Sunday. That's nothing. That's that's the same as playing Wednesday and Saturday. You know, so this the only the only difference is is the travel. You know, because sometimes you'll be playing away and then you won't get back into England until about two and three o'clock in the morning, you know, so then you're losing sleep. But it's not, for me, I, I don't know what why people go on about it a lot is because it's the same recovery time as, as from a normal game. You know, even if you get back at two or three o'clock in the morning, you don't train, you know, then you, you don't train until afternoon. You know, you, you mm. let them have a sleep in. And then you train in the afternoon, and and the next the day after a game anyway is only is you know is a recovery day, you know. So it's there's I know a lot of people talk about it, but when I when when you actually look at it properly, there's the the, the recovery times are not there's not a lot of difference in it. Does it matter which way you're home and away? Because I've tried to work into it, look at this before and look into the science of it, but this is only Zurich midweek, and then you're at home. But if you were at home in the Europa and then you were at Newcastle, would that be worse? Well, it could be the other way, Liz. It could be you're away in Europe and then away in the Premier League, you know. So then mm. that's, yeah, because then, then say, say it's away in the Europa League and then away at Newcastle on the Sunday. You've got, you've got, you've got a train so, um, Saturday and then you'll fly up to Newcastle that day. But it's... It's, it's not. It's not a lot, you know. The flight, obviously, the flight to Newcastle is not that that long, um, you know. So, you know, I find it. I find it weird that that the people go on about, you know, this this Sunday, uh, this Thursday and Sunday playing. You know, I think managers what they what they want is as much recovery time as possible. You know, so if you're playing away Sunday, uh, if you're playing away Thursday. And then you get the early Sunday, then you can moan a little bit. You know, if you get the twelve mm-hmm. o'clock or the one, you know, the early game on a Sunday, then it's like, it's like, come on, guys, you know, let's have let's have it right for our European teams. You know, get let them play Sunday afternoon on the late one. Um, you know, so it's yeah. I just, as you can tell, I find it a bit weird that it's a lot's made of it, and sometimes it gives it gives players an excuse. You know, when they don't play well, then they'll start moaning about it. But when they're playing well, they and don't managers. say a word about it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's 
you know, but when you break it down, the recovery time is exactly the same as playing on Wednesday night and playing Saturday. The Fantasy Football League. Right, guys, let's talk about fantasy football and who better to start asking some questions. Please welcome Oscar, the expert. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, David. How are we doing? How was everyone's game week? Um, mm, well, mine wasn't very yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Mine wasn't great points. either. 40. Yeah. Okay. Mm. He's still Below. top of the um, Seaman Says Mini League though, right, Dave? Doing Only all just right. though. Yeah. Have you noticed, Oscar? There's five points in it <laughs> now. Are you creeping five up? Points. Yeah. Five, five points. Five really? points. Three yeah. Other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, it was one of those game weeks, though, um, you know, uh, Man City conceding, clean sheet wiped out. Obviously, Trent Alexander-Arnold, very popular pick. Yes. He went off before 60 minutes, didn't get his clean sheet points. Um, Chelsea By 55 to West seconds. Ham. He went off yeah. 55 seconds too no. early. Can nobody have a word with these managers? You know there was a lot of screaming going up and down oh, the country. Does it, does, oh, definitely. Does Jürgen not know about all our, all our results and all our rules and everything? <laughs> I was about to say, if you got his number, Dave, someone needs to tell Klopp how FPL works so he can exactly. at least get his players past 60. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those weeks, wasn't it? Salah, obviously really disappointing for those that captain him. Um, it's, it was a close one between him and Haaland, I felt. I did go Haaland in the end, but... Oh, I was, you traitor. In... I thought you were going to go Salah. Oh, did you go Salah, Adam? <laughs> I've, been t- I've taken a punt on Salah for the past two weeks, just thinking... He's going to turn up. He's, and then it was like, okay, it's Everton. It's a derby game. He's going to turn up in this one. Yeah. Uh, and, and I've seen, you know, everyone that I'm playing against just slowly overtake me because the captains are so powerful. It's almost annoying that they're so powerful. Like you can win yeah. a league or, you know, a season depends on who your captains are. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's one of the biggest decisions each week. It's not just about which players to transfer, but obviously you have to pick the right captains. You have to pick the right players to bench. So there's all these smaller decisions each week that do have a big impact over the season. And obviously, um, the Salah v. Haaland this week was a big swing. Um, maybe we start with Salah then. Is it worth hanging on to him? I have been. I've been flirting with getting rid of him, bringing in Diaz, getting the extra money and maybe investing in a third really good striker. Because at the moment I've got Jesus and Haaland, but I could upgrade and get someone like Tony or Mitrovic. And I have got another one who I'm thinking of, but I'm not going to reveal. So, you know, do we <laughs> do we think about doing that? Aye, aye. Yeah, it's a good point. You know, Salah's disappointed. He's you know, the last few seasons, he's been kind of the king of FPL, tends to score the most points out of all the players. But so far, uh, obviously, it's all been Haaland. And yeah, you have to start to ask the question whether he's worth 30 mil, right? The most expensive player in the game. Because um, you want your players to be consistently delivering for that much. And so far, Kane scored more points than him. So as you mm. say, there is the option to get rid of Salah, which is, is crazy. I never thought we'd be in this position um, this early in the season but yeah it's you a real question you know he will start scoring if people do the question more is Oscar would you would you get rid of him I wouldn't this week it's a no for me I think there is the option to move him maybe after in game week 8 because Liverpool have Chelsea Arsenal uh, Man City in the four fixtures that follow so I think there is the opportunity to sell him but I think this isn't the week I think Although he burned a lot of managers last week, I think they have to be patient this week and keep him. I might even captain him, to be honest. So do you captain him? Yeah, I think he is going to be my captain. It's Again, it's tough because Man City obviously face Spurs, which I think is going to be a tough game. Um, but, you know, Haaland's in an unbelievable form. You know, what he's doing is just staggering. Ten goals in, what, six games. So it's hard to overlook him and they are playing at home. But I am tempted by Liverpool. They are a different beast at home, so... At the moment, my armband for captaincy is on Salah. If you were looking to replace someone, say, in, in midfield to free up a little bit of cash, now I'm annoyed because about two weeks ago, I had Rashford in the team and I kept him there thinking, he'll come good, he'll come good. I took him out <laughs> I got and he's come him. good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, <no>. exactly. <laughs> so does Salah, well, mate, well, say game week eight, does, does do you downgrade I say downgrade go for the cheaper option for Rashford because he's on he's on better form at the moment or I'm thinking about maybe putting uh, KDB in there because he's linking up nicely with Haaland at the moment he is yeah KDB is another one who looks like a real alternative to Salah Um, I think from game week eight there is that potential you know Man City face Wolves that is Man United at home Southampton at home I think those fixtures look better but as you say there is the option to just downgrade Salah to a cheap midfielder 
Um, you know, we saw Rashford do really well. Two goals, one assist against Arsenal. Um, Trossard, about the same price, got one goal, one assist. Um, yeah, there's some players like that. You can downgrade and spend that money elsewhere, like upgrading a striker to Kane. So looking at my team, what, what do you think are the, are the best cheap players to put in? Yeah, it's a good question. Obviously, it's important to have these really cheap players because they're the ones that let you spend that money elsewhere on the big hitters. Um, in defence, my favourite is Nico Williams. I think he's had a price rise, but he's only 4.1 mil. Um, he got an assist against uh, Bournemouth over the weekend. Um, his underlying numbers are really good. You know, he was taking some set pieces. I think Gibbs White might be taking over duties, but he plays in right wing back, so he's taking up good positions. Um, I like the look of Forest fixtures, so I think he's a good option. In midfield, I think the best cheap player there is Andreas. Fulham's bad fixtures are almost out of the way. Um, he's only 4.6 mil, a couple of assists this season. Again, he's been taking corners, which are aimed at Mitrovic. So um, I Hang think he's on a good a one as well. Can I just say, Oscar, all of the people that you just mentioned, it, I've got them. <laughs> Why am I not higher up the league? I've got Nico Williams. <laughs> I've got Andreas. Yeah. The captain. I've got Haaland. I'll tell you what it is, Lindsay. In fact, did you start Nico? You did, didn't you? You started Nico yeah. and he got you the four points. So, um, yeah, but I he's think not we were clean back, like says, captaincy. No, he's mm. not. It looked really good at first. 2 0 up. I thought, here we go. If he can keep a clean sheet here, this would be a huge score. But yeah, Forrest and Bournemouth just always look like conceding at the moment. Oscar, who was the top performing goalkeeper? I think after game week six, it might be Pope. Pope? Uh, let yeah. me check that. It is Pope. Yeah, he's on. He's just snuck ahead of Henderson, who obviously had saved a couple of penalties this season. Um, yeah. Saar from Wolves has been doing well, but. Yeah, if I was to pick one keeper right now, it would be Pope, actually, because the fixtures have turned quite nicely for Newcastle. Uh, they've got West Ham, then Bournemouth, then Fulham, then Brentford. So great fixtures. Um, and if you don't go for Pope, then I think Trippier, for about the same price, is a good pick as well. Oh, do I drop Aaron? <laughs> oh, good question. I mean, not before Everton, right? You've got to no, keep exactly. Ramsdale for Everton at home. Yeah. <laughs> David, you can't sell Ramsdale. You, you're not allowed to. It's, it's written in the, in, in the contract. You got you got to keep Ramsdale in your goal. I've got to. Can you imagine if he we, finds out? Oh. Exactly. Uh, we never get him back on, would we? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I've got no chance. So I've got to stick with him. Especially if you put him in for Nick Pole. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jordan. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so going in obviously the, the big game going into this weekend is obviously the City Spurs game if you have Kane and Haaland in your team who do you who do you take the punt on who do you captain I think it's got to be Haaland on form yeah you know, City they're a more attacking side he's more in form um, I won't say he's a better striker or not <laughs> you might get some <laughs> bad comments for that one but no I think uh, I think it has to be Haaland it's difficult to look past him you know, I think he's failed to score once and that was back in game week two. So, yeah, incredible form. It has to be Haaland. And just, just to round things off, Oscar, can you give us your... Who do you think is going to be the FPL star this week? Oh, good question. You know what? After a disappointing game week six, I'm going to say Trent bounces back, keeps a clean sheet and gets an assist for a, a double-digit haul. I'll go with Trent. Oh, I, I like certainly him. wouldn't be selling him either. Um, you know what? I don't know if you saw this, but um, Ivan Tony obviously got the hat trick on the weekend and he tweeted on Saturday saying, <laughs> if you guys sold me an FPL, then how do you like me now? You deserve it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quick shout out to Ashley Neeson, who was top of our Seaman Says League. Well done, but we are trying to get that gap closer, mate. Don't forget, you can join us on our Seaman Says League by using the code STF732 of the official Premier League app. A massive thanks to Oscar on FPL Focal. Cheers, Dave. Pleasure. Seaman Says, this week's predictions. Right, Lindsay, let's, let's do our predictions for this weekend. Um, first up is Fulham-Chelsea. This is quite a big derby, isn't it? Mm. You know, I always... People talk about North London and this is what's it South London is it South London South West yeah posh London Derby 
Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> the London derby. Love it. <laughs> I hope that catches on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Posh London derby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fulham against Chelsea, Saturday at 12.30. Um, Fulham are in good form, but I think it's Chelsea again. You don't know what, at the moment, you don't know what sort of performance you're going to get from Chelsea. Um, they got a lucky win at the weekend, I felt. But I'm still going to go with a... No, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. Oh, that's what I was going to go with. I thought you were going <laughs> to do it. I thought... <laughs> right, I was going to go 1-1, one, one, but seeming as I've still got a little bit of catching up to do, I'm going to go 1-2 in that case then. So I'm going for a 2-1 Chelsea win. Let's hope Sterling comes good okay. for me on that one. Uh, Bournemouth against Brighton, South Coast Derby, all the Derbys to start us off. Um, <laughs> Bournemouth, wow, to come back from two goals down against Forest and win 3 2, showed some resilience. Um, yeah. However, Big I was resilience. watching Brighton and, and they are incredible in terms of their work rate, their togetherness. I spoke to Solly March um, after the game against Leicester and he said it was the best squad that he's ever played in at Brighton. And you think about the big players that have left, like Basuma, for instance, Cucurella, and suddenly, you know, he's saying it's, it's actually the best that he's been in. Ah, oh, I think Brighton win this one, 3-1. I agree with you. I think, I think Brighton win this and I'm going to go 2-1 Brighton. Another derby, Leicester against Villa, Midlands derby. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw Leicester, you know, obviously at the weekend, and you know, got off to a great start, but then couldn't hold it. Um, and Villa coming off the back of that Man City result, I don't, I, I don't see much to choose between the teams if I'm honest. So, I'm, is this the game where Leicester get their first win though? Just add that little feeling. So, I'm going to go two one Leicester. I don't think there'll be anything between them, actually. Um, Leicester did look brittle at the back, but I do think they need to respond and it's at home. So I'm going to say 1-1. Liverpool against Wolves. No derby here. Um, it is sort of a Hooper family derby. <laughs> the ca- I've not heard the caption. <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare. Don't you dare. Um, do it. Especially do it. with the start of this season. <laughs> It is a sort of Hooper family derby. Part of my family's from Liverpool, the other half Wolves fans. Um, I don't like going against Wolves. Um, (laughs) But it's at Anfield and we're not scoring many goals. Can't do it. I'm going to have to say 2-0 Liverpool. I'm going to go 4-1 Liverpool, I'm afraid. (laughs) I think think Wolves are in for a bad bad time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> next up is Saints against Brentford there's, there's games the, the first few games that we've seen there there could there could easily be a lot of draws because um, there's not lots to choose between them Saints versus Brentford I think Brentford will score but I think do you know what I'm going to do am I going to do my Desmond or oh. uh, I'm going to go with 1-1 Again. You're going to go 1-1. One, one. Mm. Right. Again, yep. I want a differential so that I can catch up again on scores if possible. <laughs> I think, I'm sorry, Adam. I think this is an away win. Brentford have been very good. I am going to say 2-1 Brentford. Uh, Man City Spurs, the one that we've been talking about. Um, I've already indicated that I think there's going to be so many goals in this. I do. Do I go for Desmond 2-2 or do I go for City 3-2? That's what I'm going to do. 3-2 City. If you'd have gone for your Desmond 2-2, I would have said 3-2. All right, then I'll go 2-1 City. Right, next up is Arsenal against Everton. 2pm on Sunday. Um, Yeah, this is a game... We, we need to bounce back from that result against United. We need a solid performance. As much as the, the performance was good on uh, Old Trafford, the result wasn't the right one, obviously. We're still top of the league, so I'm still going to go for 3-1 Arsenal. 
I am toying with my Desmond here because I did think Everton looked impressive. And I'm wondering if having experienced the first defeat, Arsenal could be a bit rockier. However, I'm going to match up with an Arsenal win just in case because we've gone different on quite a few. So I'm going to go 2-1, Arsenal. Yeah, and I've just realised it's two England goalkeepers on show. And we're putting goals. <laughs> <laughs> You're locked in now, that's it. <laughs> locked in. Uh, West Ham against Newcastle, Sunday at two. I'm going to go with a marginal away win. 1-0 Newcastle. Wow, that, I think that's brave, Lindsay. I'm going to go for a... 2-1 West Ham win. Next up, Palace against Man United. Um, Man United are on such a good run. I can't I can't go against them as much as Palace are, are much more solid and harder to beat now. Um, I still feel Man United are going to have too much for them, so I'm going to go for a 2-0 Man United win. I'm going to back Palace at home to get something because I like them under Vieira. Um, at Selhurst Park. I think Sahar will be fine. 2-2. Uh, I'm going to go for my Desmond. Oh. And final one is Leeds against Forest. Oh, Monday at 8 o'clock. We haven't had some Monday night football this week. So, uh, look forward to this one. I think Forest will lose this I think after losing to Bournemouth as well although I think Steve Cooper will get them a little bit tighter I don't think there'll be as many goals let's go 2-1 Leeds Ooh, I like that result but you've played your 2-2 Desmond I'm going to play mine I'm going to go 2-2 mm. right as, as good as I did last week Lindsay I've come back down to earth. <laughs> I only got four <laughs> points this weekend. <laughs> yeah. You were going to be hard pushed to beat last week. I know. You're like, you just keep picking points. You're now, now chipping away. You're back, we're back to three points in it. So it's 36 to me, 33 to you. But like Arsenal, you're still top of the table. I know. Exactly. Come on, top of the table. <laughs> we don't want you running away with it, David. We need a bit of jeopardy. Oh, no. Have you had your champagne yet? <laughs> no, I'm saving it. Saving it. <laughs> if ever we eventually move house, I'm saving it. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for this week. Thanks for listening. Leave us a review on your podcast platform and we'll see you all on Monday. This is a listening dog media production.